Right now, I am the happiest that I have been in a really long time, which is crazy because I feel like I have spent so much of the last few years trying to add things into my life, find the right combination of routines, possessions, aesthetic to really create that deep satisfaction and contentment. And the thing that has actually done it for me has been simplifying, minimizing my life, my home. Today's video, I wanna share 30 things that I have quit to simplify my life, which have actively made it better in their absence. The first thing that I have quit since simplifying my life has been using my phone as a hobby. In September, I read the book Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, and then I actually ended up doing a 30-day digital detox where I stayed off of social media, I removed a lot of unnecessary technology, left my phone in black and white, and there were a lot of takeaways that I got from that, but one of the biggest ones was how much I have used my phone to fill the gap and absence of hobbies and extracurriculars in my life. If I wasn't working or actively getting something done, I was probably scrolling. I didn't have creative outlets. I didn't really have ways to connect with people or things to just do. And I didn't realize that I was feeling the effects of that until I stopped. You need hobbies, but don't make your phone one of them, which actually leads into my next point, And that was not prioritizing my leisure life. In the book, Cal Newport talks a lot about how much we have replaced high quality leisure life with whatever we will settle for as a source of dopamine and how much that's impacted us as a society. Before I stopped using my phone as a hobby, I hadn't been bored in a really long time because if I ever had space in my life, there was something right there ready to fill it. Having the flexibility and the freedom to be bored made me realize that not only is it important to form a leisure life, but it's actually something worth prioritizing and intentionally developing. The next thing that I quit was having a morning routine. And listen, if you have a morning routine that adds structure and a sense of purpose to your morning, I love that for you. That was not my experience. I have tried for years to develop the perfect morning routine and my story has always been, I found something, I loved it for a week, then it started to stress me out if I didn't hit it. So then I would try to establish another morning routine. The cycle would just go on and on and on until I finally just stopped. I'm a morning person, I love mornings, and allowing myself to just kind of take each one as it comes and do what I need on that specific day has allowed me to be a lot more productive, actually get myself ready, and really just enjoy that time a lot more. I quit my just-in-case items. As I am exploring minimalism, one of the first and foremost things that I was confronted with was how many things have remained in my possession just in case at some point I want to use, wear, do something with them. The amount of time and storage that has gone to these items in my life that I have never reached for once is absurd. I've been implementing this rule that my husband told me about, which is called the 2020 rule. It's like, if you can replace it for $20 or less in 20 minutes or less, just get rid of it. I have quit absolutes. I can definitely be an all or nothing person. And I think particularly in the minimalism, self-development, simple living space, there's a lot of people who will come out and tell you always do this, never do that. And my brain loves those statements. I love rules. I love black and white, except that I hate it. The idea of it feels so comforting to me to have these hard boundaries, but so much of life doesn't always follow those things. Giving myself the flexibility to change my mind as my journey continues and my life changes and my perspective shifts. Trying to make everyone happy. In May of this year, I accidentally went viral on Instagram. I had posted a video of myself putting tulips in a teapot like a vase and I was just like, oh my gosh, and it's so cute. And it got 4 million views. Don't know why, don't know how. I got so much hate. I actually deleted the app for a few weeks because I was getting comments and DMs that were just so nasty. And while that experience was very unpleasant, one really valuable lesson that I took away from it was that you literally cannot make everyone happy. If so many people were genuinely offended by and took the time out of their day to tell me so, tulips in a teapot? I have no hope of pleasing the internet. Also quit unnecessary appointments. I am a girl who loves to feel pulled together, but I'm also a girl who hates leaving the house. This year, I've been really challenging myself to figure out how much of the services that I pay for, I can just do for myself. So I've been dyeing my own roots since January. Plot twist, not a natural redhead. I've been doing my own nails, although they're not done right now. And then the last couple months, I've actually been tinting my own brows. I fell in love with getting my brows tinted when I had them done in August, but it was $50. And I just felt like $50 a month for tinted brows, there has to be a better way. Shout out to my sister-in-law, Bailey, for teaching me how to do it on my own. Productivity for productivity's sake. 
If you know, you know your girl loves productivity, goal setting, habits, mindset, all of that stuff. But a trap that I've often fallen into operating under the belief that the best course of action is always to accomplish more without really stopping to ask myself about what it is that I'm accomplishing or why. This was a huge contributing factor to the burnout that I experienced this summer and burnout I've experienced in the past. I really get caught up in this rhythm of just doing, doing, doing without actually asking myself if what I'm doing is contributing to the overarching vision of my life and what I'm trying to build and create. Really focusing on slow, intentional productivity, doing less, but just doing it better and making really high quality versions of everything that I do. I have quit the need to be taken seriously. This is a little chip that I've carried around on my shoulder for as long as I can remember of just feeling like I needed to prove myself in every circumstance. It was very important to me to be taken seriously by people. Finally, I hit a point where I was like, you know what? There are going to be people who don't take me seriously and there's nothing that I can do to change that. But I am very sick of having my energy and my time go towards that when I could just be focusing on something else. I've quit browsing sales. I've been a sales shopper my whole life. I love a good bargain. Shopping around and like trying to get the best deal is a great option. Browsing sales has usually led me to just buy stuff because it's cheap, not because I need it. We currently have a list on my phone of things that I'm hoping to purchase at some point in the next three to four months that I'm gonna try and watch holiday sales for. I'm able to go search for that specific item without scrolling through pages and pages of discounted items and feeling tempted by them. And that habit really comes out of another thing that I've quit, which is just maintaining a scarcity mindset. This is something I've had as long as I can remember, just like a deep seated fear of not having enough and feeling like I always need to have way, way more than I need for both financially and I think in stuff as well. That's been a source of security and stability for me. And I'm working really hard to kind of let go of that need and just find comfort and trust in the Lord to provide and be okay with just like, we have what we need for right now. I am no longer purchasing any toxic products for our home or my body and skin and makeup. I've been on a journey this year, learning a lot about my hormonal health and endocrine disruptors, and just realized that a lot of the products that we have been bringing into our home are very harmful for our health with potentially really negative side effects down the road. I'm pretty sure we're actually saving money now with the products that we've swapped to, and they're much higher quality, much better for us. The next thing I've quit is staying up late. I honestly think it's hilarious that I've kind of lived in a state of like permanent exhaustion for 10 years and it never occurred to me, nor was it ever suggested to me, that the solution might literally just be getting more sleep. I started going to bed a lot earlier, kind of mid-September, and the change it made literally overnight <laughs> is insane. When I go to bed early, my three o'clock slump doesn't happen. I have enough energy to last the whole day. I sleep well consistently. My mental health is a lot better. And while there is a little bit of FOMO here and there, I'm usually the first one to leave things. I feel so good and much more present when I am in those moments that it's definitely worth it for me. The next thing that I have quit is social media apps on my phone. I don't think I'm capable of having a healthy relationship with the apps on my phone. I scroll, I waste a lot of time and I have very little self-control in that capacity. Having them on my computer makes it a lot easier easier for me to kind of hop on during my work day, but I don't have it at my disposal 24 hours a day. And I just don't think that I need it. Fast food. This was a hard one for me to get started on, but oh my gosh, the prices have gone up so much that it made it a lot easier. My weak spot for fast food is always when I'm out running errands and I forgot to eat lunch or I'm hungry, I need a snack and it's right there. I want a junior bacon cheeseburger. Now I really want a junior bacon cheeseburger. I should not have said that, but it's expensive. I never feel good afterwards. And I've recently implemented a strict budget for myself. So that is not happening. We're not doing fast food anymore. One of the best things that I've quit to simplify my life and one of the things I would most strongly recommend to anyone else is expecting uniformity out of my days. This really came out of starting to understand my hormonal rhythms and cycle and how that was affecting me throughout my life and the different rhythms and particularly how it was affecting my brain for years, particularly since being self-employed. I have really struggled with feeling like my capacity was very inconsistent. I'm a writer, I did freelance writing for years. I wrote a book a couple years ago and I would have weeks where I felt like the words were just pouring out of me faster than I could possibly keep them in. And then I would have another week where I felt like I was having so many ideas for blog posts, articles, book ideas, but I couldn't just sit down and actually write them. It made me feel like such a failure because I would try to plan what I wanted to do one day or one week and then my brain wouldn't cooperate with me. And it was so frustrating and disempowering. And it just turns out my brain doesn't work like that. 
I think to some extent, expecting uniformity is harmful for everybody, but particularly for the female brain, which does not run on a 24 hour hormonal cycle, but a 28 day one, you will literally experience different periods of intense creativity, intense motivation, periods of increased reflection when your brain is communicating most effectively. And it's actually more valuable for you to sit down and kind of assess where you're at. Understanding that has not only helped me be more productive and efficient in my workflow, where I'm able to kind of align the tasks with what I'm best at in a given week, but it's also helped me have much more realistic expectations for myself. And that's just been such a gift. Last, but definitely not least, the final thing that I have quit to simplify my life has been choosing options over simplicity. This is something I've done in my wardrobe, in my kitchen, in my makeup bag for years. It's just, I've placed such a high value on having options to choose from and feeling like I can just wake up and decide what I'm in the mood for because I have all of these options rather than giving myself a select group of high quality items that I know that I love. This is what I've been doing lately. And while I was operating under the assumption that it would feel restrictive, it's been so freeing and so fun. Every day I'm wearing something I love. I feel cute and it's removed the choice paralysis and decision fatigue that I was experiencing on an almost daily basis. All of this process is really just about simplifying my life to increase the quality and my experience and just be able to focus most on the things that matter to me rather than spending so much of my time dealing with maintenance of things I really don't care about. Simplifying my life has been such an incredible process. I'm really excited to keep going. And I actually think I wanna do a one year like update of this video. So I'll remake it in a year and kind of see what's the same, what's changed. If there are other things that I have found that I've quit, if there are things in this video that I have changed my mind on. Yeah, I really appreciate you being here. I hope that this video was helpful. I would love to know if there's anything that you've removed from your life that's made a big difference. Definitely leave a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear about it. I hope you have a good day because today is a good day to have a good day. And that's it, bye.